you guys have talked a lot about the O-line, but what about the D-line? One of the best defensive players in the entire conference is right here on the UC Davis Aggies football team. It's James Amos. He is a senior from Galt. He is the defensive end for the Aggies. And I think just about everyone in this entire conference knows exactly who this guy is. I even hear that he is so good that coaches from opposing teams actually have been known to draw up schemes to double team him in order to keep him out of their backfield because he can certainly rush the passer. He leads his team in sacks and he is third in tackles with 41 and he is getting a lot of interest from the pros. In fact, Pro Football Weekly Digest has even asked for his profile. And you see Davis has not actually had a pro draft choice since 2002 with JT O'Sullivan, who is now the backup quarterback for the Detroit Lions. So a lot of excitement surrounding Amos. And you know, guys, great pass rushers in the NFL make a heck of a lot of money. So I think I'm in the wrong business. What do you think? Should I become his agent? Take I, my 10% cut? I used to be a sports anchor over in the Bay Area, and I've been covering Joe since he was a freshman in high school playing for Casa Grande High School in Petaluma. He is an amazing player. He held the school in Redwood Empire record of 5,447 yards rushing. And first time out here for the Aggies, a 90-yard run. And his coaches say he will soon become the cornerstone of the Aggies football program. Welcome back to Aggie Stadium, where South Dakota State University is ahead seven zip. With me right now, Jeff Hogan. He is the head athletic trainer with the Aggies. So it seems like you've got the injury bug. Have you ever had a long run like this? Do you think it has to do with that flat turf starting with Portland State? What about Joe Trombetta? We, he's been out since San Jose State. Today's his first day back, and he seems to be down again. Is he getting back on the field? Hey, did you guys know Ryan Barry is actually married to his high school sweetheart, Caitlin? They have a little boy. And both wife and husband are competing, one on the track, one on the field today. His wife, Caitlin, is competing in the Summit League Cross Country Championships. And I just found out she placed fifth, and SDSU actually placed third as a team. Very athletic family. <laughs> you haven't had a, uh, you haven't been shut out in 17 years. So what are you going to say to these guys in the locker room to make sure that that doesn't happen today? And how are we going to cut down on some of those penalties? Welcome back to Aggies Stadium at the Aggies versus South Dakota State University right now at the half. South Dakota State University ahead 21 zip. So a big turnaround possibly in the works for Aggies going into the second half, but we'll have to wait to see on that. But despite the score right now, it's been a big year for the Aggies. This is their first year as a full-fledged D1 school. Also a brand new stadium. Comcast Sportsnet's Nicole Zalumas gives us a tour of this $31 million facility. Well, right now it is called Aggie Stadium, but for a mere $10 million, it could be named after you. What do you think? Kim, Coase, and Pulaski Stadium? Hey, maybe Comcast will pitch in for that one. Welcome back to Aggie Stadium. Right now we are at the half. The Aggies versus the South Dakota State University Jackrabbits. The Jackrabbits ahead 21 zip at the half, and it is not often that we find a basketball coach on the football field but right here right now we have Gary Stewart he's at the helm of the UC Davis basketball team fifth year at the helm of the team and this has been an exciting four or five years transitioning to D1 your first year as a full-fledged D1 team competing for playoffs how exciting is that Kim we couldn't be more excited how has your transition to D1 helped you in recruiting and what players should we watch out for this season who will be the toughest competition this year the polls say UC Santa Barbara well, you know, Kim, I'm one game at a time, and uh, we'll play University of Laverne on November the 11th. And Your alma mater! Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited about that. Yeah, a lot of emotion probably tied up in that matchup. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Gary. We wish you the best this season. Kim, great visit with you. Yes, I have Coach Stiglmeyer with me. You haven't had much luck on the road this season, so what's changed? So what did you say to the guys in the locker room to actually keep this momentum going? Now, there is a lot at stake here with this particular game because this could ultimately secure a shot for the conference title. Well, coaches actually say he, Koenig is one of the most driven, focused people they have ever been around. His success in the classroom and on the field, they say, is not an accident. He's just an amazing kid. He's majoring in biology, and he wants to be a doctor, so he's actually going to be going to med school next year. Welcome back to Aggie Stadium, where the UC Davis Aggies had just scored. Now it's 21 UC Davis Aggies to South Dakota State University, 28. So the Aggies still keeping their hopes for a 38th consecutive winning season alive. Fred Arp, assistant coach for the Aggies, been with the team for 41 years. He's retiring this year. He's been through it all. He's been there from the very beginning of this winning streak. He says, hey, you know what? I have full faith in my team that we can continue this winning streak. But you know what? If we don't continue it, the sun will rise again, and he should know because he was there when the 20-year championship run came to an end in 1990. And so he said the sun rose again then. It will this time. And he said it's time 
probably for a fresh start for the Aggies. Back to you guys up at the booth.